check. All right, praise God, amen, hallelujah. Good to be get back, amen. Let's all stand, amen, we're gonna worship God in Jesus' name. Sing that song, come, now is the time to worship. Amen, if you are on the live stream, God bless you as well. Uh, join us as we sing God's praise, amen. Come, now is the time to worship, amen. Let's give it all to the Lord, here we go. every single one of you, my family, your family over here, Janie, amen, we're going to thank uh, the Lord Jesus 
thanking him for the cross. Amen. Let us be changed into his image every single day. Amen. Let God help you tonight. Amen. Trusting in the cross. Amen. And sanctification. Here we go. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, the mighty cross, that God himself heads together. Amen. God bless everyone here tonight. Amen. I thank you for uh, your sacrifice and labor. Those who couldn't come, amen. We also, I did get the text messages. God bless you as well on your household, your family. Amen. Good to be back in the house of God. We just want to lay a foundation of faith. Amen. We are calling this the house of God. This is where the spirit of God dwells. Amen. And invite them into your home. We could have them here at church service. Amen. But good to be back in the presence of God's people. Amen. We want to lift a prayer uh, before we go before the throne. Uh, why don't we start by lifting up Pastor G.J. Hernandez in Cicero, Illinois. They are having revival uh, with Roderick Gonzalez. Unfortunately, it just, it happened last minute. We found out we're not going to be able to go to that. Amen. But we do want to pray uh, for that revival. Amen. Roderick uh, Gonzalez, who is a brother in the faith evangelist who came to the church uh, here. We want to pray for uh, his family, his ministry. Uh, we're praying for the Cicero Church as well and the surrounding churches uh, in Jesus' name for God's word to prosper and to give revelation and truth in these last days. Amen. So pray for Pastor Gigi Hernandez. We're going to continue to pray for Tony Ruscon in New Berlin. Let's not forget about him. And then we'll pray for his church as well. He gave me a good report, and I'll give some more on that uh, during the announcements. Amen. So we're praying for his family. Pray for Brother Caleb Melendez as well, who is in uh, Cheyenne, India. Officially, he showed me videos. It looks like Juarez, Mexico. I'll tell you what, 
Cars driving wherever they feel like, and it's just the way it goes. Amen. So pray for him and his family, for God's protection and provision over their lives. Amen. We do want to pray for Pastor uh, Bobby Perez and Carrie. They did hold their first uh, Sunday service, not this past Sunday, but the previous one. Uh, they had uh, one, two, three people there. Amen. So I'll give you more on that. Amen. We want to thank God uh, for what he's doing in Jesus' name. Amen. God is moving on the behalf of the church. Amen. Pray for us. Amen. For uh, the ministry. We just want to bless the people of God here today, those that aren't here. Thank you for your prayers and your faith. Amen. So let's go before God. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Tony and then his last name. And he's a cousin of yours? Okay. All right, we will lift up Tony as well, amen, for God's help, provision, his blessing, amen. God knows uh, the heart of every person, and that's the wonderful thing about faith, amen, as we lift up our voices in faith. The Bible says sometimes we have to, uh, just with groaning of words that we can't even mention, but he says, I know your heart, I know what you're praying for. Even before the syllable comes out of your mouth, the Bible says, God says, I know your heart and your faith. So we want to lift that up in Jesus' name, amen. So let's lift our voice, thank God. Father, we thank you this night. God, for your mercy, your grace, your love, your provision, Father God, we're grateful to be here today, God, in your presence and in the midst of your people, Father God. Thank you tonight, God, Father, for all that you're going to do, everything that you have accomplished in the lives of people, God, the faith that you have given us to endure hardship, God, to endure persecution and difficulties, God. You are the God who remains, and we thank you that you are never changing, God. Your laws are the same, and your love never fails, and for that we thank you, we worship you. We lift up Tony, God, in the name of Jesus Christ for healing for your provision God Jim Tesh as well we're praying for his life making sure that his heart is okay everything in his body is working uh, properly Father God the Hanzert family God the Ayala family Mario Ayala we're going to pray for Reuben Reese and all his family God and all those God that we love dearly Yolanda and uh, Nevaeh as well Father we thank you we love you in Jesus mighty name we all said amen God bless you man let's take time to bless everyone and then we'll have a seat shortly Amen. Yeah. God bless you. I mean, we do have the people online as well. Good to be back. Amen. Um, yeah, I did want to give a couple of reports, though, as far as uh, Tony, Pastor Tony Rascon again. He said that the people that he lost, he said he was able to win them back. Uh, we had a conversation and it, it's just the difficulty of helping the people of God interpret seasons. Right. Things happen. Issues of life. We get discouraged. We want to run from God. And he was able to win them back, amen, with the word. So he's encouraged about that. And he said, thank you for uh, the prayers. Not sure why he went out of town today. So I don't know. I'm like, you should bring your church over here uh, so they could come as well, amen. So just uh, pray for Tony uh, Rascon. And then also uh, Pastor Bobby Perez and his family. So what he had, I need to get the pictures up here. I'll have them Sunday morning. But he had uh, Russian refugees so, but they are tied to the potter's house. So they fled the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the draft. And so they were able to make it into Israel. And it was a couple, a husband and his wife. And then it was a, another woman who's not from Russia. I think she was from Taiwan, but also connected to the church. They were sent there into Israel. So they have a small group and that's just enough to at least get started. Amen. So I'll show you the pictures of that. I had to reload them. He sent them on a, on a different app because he texts me from, it's not a U.S. number, so he has to text me there. Go ahead, Brother Benny.
Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's probably what it was, because I'm like, why would they go to Israel? I mean, there's, they could have gone into Germany. They, I mean, who knows? I don't know who, who the Russians are in alliance with to say, hey, bring them back home, and now they're captives. So uh, to me, I mean, I mean, it's a blessing either way, but I'm like, oh, my gosh, he, I'm, I'm seeing God's plan starting to align, even though it is, but it's like, no, no, they're from the potter's house. So on their first service, he was already playing guitar, and they were praising God in their little live. It was their house, right? Yeah, Carrie and Bobby's house, you can see the kitchen. They were in the living room. He was laying hands and all that. So I was like, that's amazing. So they, they already know the routine, but God has placed them there to encourage them and to have a foundation. Because, you know, when you go into new territory, you know what the hardest thing is? Having people capture the vision, how the church functions, how, you know, how it all works together. So they already know the potter's house and the door, so they're able to function with that. And so... I'll, yeah, so a beautiful young couple, and I'm just like, amen. Awesome. So he got to share that. Oh, I thought they were using the translated thing. Let me, let me show you real quick. Uh, I can show you the picture real quick. I mean, now, now that it's just us, so you can see them there. This is the couple, and that's, I think she's from Taiwan. Oh, Filipino, he says there. So it's this couple here. And then that one there. Wow. So, I'll send the video as well. Yeah. Yeah. So they're getting it rolling there. Amen. Keep them in prayer. For those on the live stream, hang in there. We're just showing. I should have put the video up here. Um, amen. Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 7. That'll be the main text. Amen. Uh, if you have a tither and offering, we can give that today. I know it has been a while. I do have uh, Brother Jim was able to send his through the mail. Amen. But help us uh, to continue uh, in providing for the church of God. Amen. The Bible says you have been given freely. Freely, hey, you have been given freely. Uh, you have received freely give amen so we want to continue and partaking in that hopefully having a revival uh if we can squeeze one in either this end of december to january i'll let you know about that as well i have someone in mind uh, that we can have one uh but help us with that amen we're going to just ask for god's blessing and i'm going to put uh brother jim's tithe in the offering as well amen father we thank you tonight amen for the grace of god and all that you've given us and we thank you God, for always providing for our lives. We thank you for the faith and the people of God that are here. And God, you are a God who provides. And it's, it's amazing how you do it. Even in our recent journey, Father God, you were able to supply our needs. Uh, we were never without. And we bless your mighty name. I pray for everyone who is here uh, to learn to contribute to the things of God in faithfulness with a motive that is pure. And God will always supply the needs for his people and always open doors in which no man can open, even shutting those which no man can shut, Father God. And I'm thankful for the congregation, those for that are online uh, who have given as well, and even those who can't give, that they can plant a seed in prayer and pray for the ministry. And we thank you, God, for all that you've given, everything that you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Let me put that in there. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, verses 7 through 9. Amen. Go ahead and turn your Bibles there. I'm entitling this one. Amen. Don't forget to lock the gate of your field of seeds. I'm going to say that again. Don't forget to lock the gate of your field of seeds. And I'll explain more as we get into the message here. I was inspired by this. Amen. Amen. Uh, just having a picture of this man that I have up here who is given an instruction, who is looking at the harvest that is about to come and the things that he is about to inherit. Uh, and a lot of the times, as farmers, we're planting seeds in this vast field, not knowing what will come up or when it will come up and how much will come up. And I want to say this as we get into the message. The kingdom of God, if you can see the picture on the live stream as well, Amen. The kingdom of God is like a vast field in which a fortunate 
person inherited. And I want us to really picture this, amen, to picture this vast field, a farm of a fortunate person that was given this land to inherit. And the kingdom of God is like this. And in this land, we're given instructions of how fruitfulness and a successful crop would eventually flourish. So this person was given this land. He was given an instruction of how to have fruitful, a fruitfulness and a successful crop that would yield bountiful, and here's the thing, if maintained and properly protected from the elements around it. So the only way that this field would ever be successful is that if he followed the, the blueprint, the plan of how to be a successful farmer and understanding that if he follows this, the promises would be unfathomable. Prosperity, purpose, think about this. Blessing and assurance of a fortunate person. But see, the thing is that there's no guarantee for success in this field if the person says, I'm going to do it my way. Can you say amen? We're not guaranteed a field. And I want to picture every one of us have given an, given an inheritance of this field and a land that God promises us. He says, I want you to sow into that farm. I want you to plant and scatter seed everywhere. Things that you love. I want prayers to be the seeds that fall into this farm that I give you. I want there to be healing. I want prosperity. I want joy. I want you to see the inheritance of the things that I have promised for your life so that when the time is right, you will reap a harvest if you don't. Don't give up. And this farmer said, out of great joy and gratitude, he said, I'm setting out to begin to tend this land, to follow the blueprint, the instruction that has been given to me so that I can be successful at everything that I do. And you see, our choices reveal the condition of the farm and the types of seeds that we plant. Let me ask you a question. Have you received a portion of your labor of the field that you tend? Because every single one of us has a personal land, a field that has a perimeter. It's guarded by fences. We have patrol. We have, uh, we're, we have scarecrow out in the field. We're looking out for any type of rodents uh, and intruders that want to infest the land and steal the crop. But the question is, have you allowed it to be breached? by rodents and spirits. Amen. I want to entitle this one, Don't Forget to Lock the Gate of the Field of Your Seeds. Amen. Let's read the Word of God today, one that's very familiar, and it's going to help us to understand, amen, to how to live not only a life for Jesus Christ, amen, to be successful, to have heart, to fight during the hardest times of our lives, and to be successful in Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, meaning the seed, he will also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption, decay. But if he sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap a harvest. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you here today, and I pray that within every heart and every life, God, that we would envision this vast field of blessing that has been given by the Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are farmers here today, pilgrims that are set on a journey to excavate, to tend this field, to protect it from robbers, thieves, and rodents, and pesticides, God. And you have called us to be on watch and on guard that in due time, every prayer that we have planted Every hope that is within our heart, everything that we will to wish that is in that field will eventually grow and prosper if we continue to do good in faithfulness and not complain. And I pray that that day would come. Many of us have seen those blessings even now within our lives, fruit and seeds that have been planted years ago, 10, 20 years ago. We've seen the result of patientness, patience and the grace of Jesus Christ. Give us, God, wisdom. This is a call for the, the church to rise up, amen, amen, and to investigate what is happening. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name, and we all said, amen. amen. A farmer has a very heavy task. Can you say amen? And a lot of the times what we forget is the devil is in the details of the labor. 
How many have ever got a job before that promises a great pay, but the devil's within the details? As soon as you get within that job, all of a sudden you start to see all the petty things that you don't like, and we discard those things. Farmers have a heavy task, and many of us enjoy the produce of the labor of the farmer. Can you say amen? We always forget about the unsung hero, the person that is out in the field. I was driving from Sheboygan the other time. For the first time in my life, they had a blueberry field. And I don't know what race they were, but they had sun hats like they were in China. And they were plucking out blueberries or something like that. Uh, and just vast numbers of people just out there plucking little things, uh, putting them in a basket fulls and doing the hard labor. It's hard work. We went out to the field out, uh, it's a, uh, uh, what was that patch place? Sunflower. Sunflower patch place. They had raspberries and they, you know, you can get your own raspberries. I'm like, who wants to pluck these things? You go, <laughs> right, you go out to uh, the farmer's market or you go out to, you know, pick and save and nobody wants to pluck blueberries or raspberries. It looks very tedious. But we forget about the unsung heroes, which are the farmers. And not just that. A lot of people have the mindset of just plant and run. Can you say amen? I'm just going to throw a seed into the ground. I'm going to run from it, and God's going to bless it and reward it. But rather, I want us to envision something else, uh, that we are to plant, protect, and watch. Can you say amen? amen? Likewise, following Christ, again, it takes heart. It is hard work. I would be a liar here today. I've heard preachers say, just give your life to Jesus. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to have a white picket fence, a perfect wife, a perfect marriage. Finances are going to come into play. Everyone is going to like you. That is far from the truth. It is hard work to be a farmer for the kingdom of God. But with the right heart, beloved, we can make it happen as a farmer. With determination, we are sold out for the kingdom of God, for our Lord. According to the text, it says, our Lord is a heavy taskmaster. Amen. Amen. He requires a lot from his people, but he believes and has seen with his own eyes uh, the future and the labor of his people, saying, they can surely do it because with my spirit within their lives, uh, they can accomplish anything. He is a heavy taskmaster. And he requires much because if it weren't for him, beloved, we would just sit down and wait for things to happen. God, by his grace and by the power of Jesus Christ, has said, you have so much more to accomplish. But if I don't push you here today, you're going to allow your field to go to waste. All the promises and the seeds that have been planted in the ground would be laid barren and waste. And you will never see them come into fruition. We are called to farm and plant seeds. Can you say amen? to watch and to wait, to protect. Our dreams are in that land. Amen? Everything that we prayed for, there's some people here today, maybe on the live stream, I'm speaking to someone here. You have planted things about 10 years ago. You've been asking God, Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I am asking for such and such to begin to happen in my life. And amen. Those are seeds that are planted within that field. And we sit there and watch and wait. We take care of it. We water it. We protect it from rodents and all kinds of bacteria and fungi. But we watch it and patiently wait. And as a farmer, it is when we start to see the sprouting of these things that say, glory to God, amen, hallelujah. I look at the farm and I see the seeds that have been planted for years and years and years beginning to flourish. If you look at the U U.S. farmer today, like I said, they take on the heavy load of the country. We're starting to feel some of the effects of what is happening. We'd be, we better be grateful for farmers. I had a person come back from Florida yesterday. I was driving her back. She's from Fort Lauderdale, all the mess that had happened out there. She said, there's places where diesel is not available anymore. She's saying this. I said, I don't know where you stand politically, but you got that right. Things are changing. So whatever happens, again, it affects the farmer, is eventually going to affect everything around it. Likewise, in the kingdom of God, as a farmer of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the things that we plant within that farm, 
the things that we forget about him and can have a detrimental effect on life itself. Uh, when we begin to see crop failure, can you say amen? I planted seeds sometimes of things. Uh, I bought flowers for the wife, amen. Go to waste again because we, they were not properly cared for. One time I hit one with a hose, it snapped in half and I told my wife she was upset, amen. Uh, being a farmer is a heavy task. But I want to say secondly again is the risk of crop failure is impartial to everyone. It can happen. The possibility of the field being completely destroyed is possible. And likewise, when we're in Christianity, all the prayers that we pray, God, heal this person. God, bless my children. God, touch my aunt and my uncle. God, bring more people into the church. These are all seeds that have been planted. But the possibility of crop failure is possible for every single person. From the pastor to the new believer that comes into the church and gets saved, uh, radically touched by Jesus Christ, they're on fire, ready to serve God, and all of a sudden crop failure happens. They're discouraged, and you never see them in church again. There was a thing called the Great Chinese Famine that started in 1932. The great communists that we know of uh, during that time started to notice that there was a resistance in the type of labor that they wanted so they forced a famine. Amen. That's one communism. Amen. They intentionally forced a famine to people that were not willing to bow down to the Chinese government. They were an unwilling population is what they called them. They said, this is an unwilling population. We're going to take matters into our own hands. What began to happen is they were removing fields uh, from people. They said, you are not allowed. Sounds kind of familiar. You're not allowed to have personal farming. You can't practice that. They would started to take farms uh, from these Chinese people. Again, that this was their living. This was their means of survival. And they introduced what they called the Great Leap Forward. Right? It sounds appealing to me. It sounds like Build Back Better, right? It's very appealing. They called it the Great Leap Forward. And they outlawed private, pro private property farming. So they removed this, and they began to enter them into forced labor camps for iron and steel productions. Now I want you to think about this just for a moment, amen, because it reminds me of what Satan wants to do to the people of God. He says, you can't have this field anymore. I don't care what you planted here. I don't care about your prayers. I don't care about the promises that God told you. I don't even care what the evangelist told you. I don't care about prophecy. I don't care about what you think you can do for God. This property now belongs to me. I'm going to strip it from you, and I'm going to put you into forced labor to doing things in the way I've called you to do. The Chinese Communist Party again mandated new methods. Listen to this real quick where they began to plant seeds, and what they wanted is everything to be three to five feet apart, but they wanted the seeds dug in five feet into the ground. You can't do that. This was intentional, and they began to plant it within their mind. This is the new farming method that you're going to practice. It was going to maximize growth and efficiency. These policies failed, and the team, uh, there was a flood that happened in 1959, a drought that happened the year following. They lost all the crops. 43 million people died from 1932 to 1965 when, when Build Back Better, I mean the great leap of, of forward, finally failed. 43 million Chinese had died from the famine due to that. Nobody talks about that. And because it was a new farming method. I find it strange again how they called it the great leap forward. A very promising way of farming to maximize growth and efficiency, and it came to a complete ruin. 43 uh, million Chinese people from that time, to about 30 years of time, died because of that, because unorthodox methods. Can I tell you something today? We cannot serve God on our own terms. He has called us to farm the field according to his way. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows that he will also reap. 
In other words, God is telling us here, you cannot find a different method to sow seeds into the ground because nothing will ever come from them. He's telling us tonight, maybe on the live stream, you're planting seeds out of the flesh in an unorthodox way that is going to cause crop failure and everything that you have hoped or aspired or were inspired by is going to completely be destroyed because the method is from Satan himself. The Chinese government came in there. They said, stop what you're doing. I don't care what you have learned. This property is mine, and you're going to do an unorthodox way, and I'm going to bring destruction subtly so that you don't even notice what hits you. And many people are shooting themselves in the foot with a new farming method. Let me just get specific. Their style of praying. No prayer is wrong, but their praying is not based on faith. Can you say amen? Their praying, again, is a method of microwave generation i place it a hungry a hungry man in the microwave for a minute and 30 seconds and i get a full meal beloved that is not how we serve god things take time as a farmer we throw seeds into the ground and believe god that one day that prayer will come into fruition that we will reap a harvest we will begin to see god do tremendous things but because of this method people are shooting themselves in the foot offering a, a false service of god a different way to experience their calling. Can you say amen? amen? I can have the calling of God, but I can also do such and such as I want. This is a strategy of Satan. And when this happens, I'm going to get to my second point again. You're going to begin to see chaos. Beloved, that's not what we want to see. Amen? I don't want to see any person here. My prayer is tonight, amen, but before we leave, whether here or on the live stream, we say, God, I am serving under your terms. I understand that as a farmer, I will plant a seed, and I will watch that seed. I will water the seed, and I will also protect it from any kind of bacteria, rodents, any infestation that comes, because I am hoping that one day that prayer that I have sown into the ground will flourish and sprout, and I will see my blessings come forward. Jesus taught about this. He said in Matthew 6, 19, we all know these. I'm, I'm doing basic scripture today. He said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. In other words, don't do it the earthly way. He says, where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. In other words, he's saying those prayers, uh, your treasure and our prayers are treasure. Can you say amen? There are things that we are hoping for to see. And he's saying don't do it the earthly where where they can be destroyed and thieves can break in and steal. Verse 20, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. In other words, do it the kingdom way where moth and vermin do not destroy. How many know that when you pray a heavenly prayer, it is not lab it's not a labor in vain. It actually goes to the throne room of God. Amen. By the order of him who sits upon the throne before the council of heaven, that prayer is received in heaven. And God says, I hear that prayer, and I am protecting that prayer, and I'm going to bring that prayer into fruition to begin to see heavenly things. And he says, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal, but where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me tell you tonight, amen, fields that are left attended, unattended, I'm sorry. How many have ever left a gate open, right? You leave the gate open, maybe you had a puppy, we have a puppy, I'm going to leave the door open one day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was like, God, dang it. I, I told my wife today I was having a quick lunch in between, a, a, you know, a long shift today. And I say, when I come home, that dog's in the room. I don't want him sniffing me. I don't want him asking for food. Because every time I eat, he's just, you know. So I said, I want, so he's in the room. And as soon as I open the door, he knows, right? And he's just scratching at the door, you know. And he's just scratching on there. And I'm like, I text her. I said, I'm about to kick that dog. And, I, and you're, I'm not going to feel sorry about it. I forget how I said it exactly. There's some times, again, where we can leave the door unattended. <laughs> But how many know when we leave a door un, uh, unattended, again, things can creep in and bad things can begin to happen. See, carnal decisions lead to, to procrastination and problems. Look what our text says, amen. He says, for he who sows, again, putting a seed into the ground, he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, or the, the word in Greek is will reap decay. But he who sows, again a seed, to the Spirit 
of the Spirit will reap everlasting life. And notice the wording that is here. He's talking, he's using an illustration or a metaphor about a farmer. He says, when you see good things happen in your life, that seed was planted by faith in the spiritual realm. He says, but when it was out of flesh, and I'm talking about false motives, I'm talking about doing things on your own terms. It's just kind of a seed. You want things. You, it's a microwave generation. God, I'm going to sow a seed that by tomorrow, $1,000 is going to show up in my account. I haven't worked in years. I'm lazy. I'm a procrastinator. But you're going to do all these miracles. And God says, that is a seed that is sown in the flesh. He says, you're going to reap decay and corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit of the Spirit will reap everlasting life. I have seen so many men fall, and mainly men because that's who we're discipling around, even in the El Paso church, that have fallen by the wayside. Listen to me here. I have seen men, again, of, of great faith, love Jesus Christ. They genuinely were touched by the Holy Spirit, were speaking in tongues, and God filled their life with joy. We, I saw the victory in particular men where we would stand side by side. A Sam, his name was Sam in particular, and we're, we're going to touch the world. We're going to preach Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to go out there and do something for God. They were genuinely touched, but like a seed that fell to the wayside. Amen. All of a sudden, they run out of the church and deny that God existed. Amen. Something didn't happen according to plan, and not what they saw within that field of seeds that they had planted. And all of a sudden, God doesn't exist. He has left me abandoned. And only to investigate that the fence was left open. When you look down deep into the issues of the problems of life, people don't just whack backslide. I mean, it is, it is a small thing that happens by simply leaving a door cracked for an intruder to find its way in. And I've seen great men who have abandoned the things of God, completely leaving everything that they believed in, investigating the matters. One in particular, you know, I'm just looking at this illustration that God put within my head, and I'm looking at what has happened, and I said, what is happening in your life? He said, I don't know. It's just chaos that is happening. I don't know where God is. I don't know what has happened. I said, and in, I'm speaking in the spirit. I said, we're going to have to go into the field to see what is left. And as we're walking in the field, and I'm talking about investigating a person's life, because the gate was open, you see a field that was once tended. tended. It was plowed. The seeds were in order. You were starting to see the sprouting effect began to happen and then you see where the fox came in tearing down the prayers of faithfulness and love and resilience seeds of peace and joy victory tarnished all over the place uh, this fox got into into the fence and destroyed all the goodness that god was beginning to happen and there's no one to blame but the person who forgot to Close the fence. I've seen marriages destroyed because the fence was open. And the person is shaking their fist at God. How did this happen? And we investigate, and again, the fence was open. Promises and dreams completely destroyed, marriages ruined, calling completely destroyed. I have seen men of God when I got saved there clapping their hands, praising God next to pastor. You know how they'll have the pastor stand and, you know, they're at the beginning of the service and I would look at these men and say, wow, they get to stand up there with the pastor and praise God. What is he going to do? He says he wants to preach. Beautiful family, beautiful wife. God is blessing their marriage. They left the fence open. Everything completely destroyed. No longer serving God. One in particular got in uh, nearly a fatal accident. You know, you're hearing about him. Is he going to make it? I don't know. He's, he's been stubborn since this all happened. Women involved, leaving kids behind. Why? Because he left the fence open. See, we're called to protect that field. If you really believe in the seeds that you planted in prayer and hoping 
the evangelist came and gave you a powerful word. You're going to touch the world for Jesus Christ. Beloved, that is a seed that you plant in the ground. You say, I'm taking care of that seed. I'm watching the fence. Ain't no fox going to get into my field because I believe in the promises of God. I believe in everything that has been spoken to my life. And one day, beloved, one day I will begin to see the fruit of my labor. I'm not letting any pesticide, any insect, no malicious plant to get into this field, weeds and rodents, bacteria and fungi. I am going to tend the field. I'm going to take care of it because God has promised something greater than I can understand. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every calling and every promise will come into fruition. And Jesus warned us about this in Luke 8. We remember the parable of the seeds. Look what it says. A farmer went out to sow his seed. There we go again. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and look what it says, and the birds ate it up. This is, again, an illustration of seed, good seed that was supposed to go into good ground, was then trampled, and the Bible says that a bird ate it up. Only uh, seven verses later, he gives us the explanation to what this means. He says, this is what verse 5 means. He says, in the same parallel, he says, those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil, the devil is who? The bird that ate it up comes and takes away the word from where? Their heart. The bird comes into the field. He says, I have access into the heart. I'm going to begin to take things from the field. I'm going to steal their promises, steal their hope, steal their joy. I'm going to teach them a new farming method that you can leave the fence open and everything's going to be okay. And God says, no, because the birds will eat it up. The only one who that claims crop failure is the one who sows seeds of the flesh. The walk is not sown in faith, in sincerity. Beloved, God has, Jesus our Lord has taught us how to farm and to take care of our fields. So there is no blaming God when these things begin to happen, because you better believe, he says, what you sow, you will reap, and I will not be mocked. He says, turn around, and you turn, and you see, the, he says, the fence is open, and your field is tattered and torn. Look at it. All that labor that you did on that field, all the praying, all the labor, all the sacrifice of your life, beloved, we have got to be on guard of these things, and I'm telling you, the church of Jesus Christ in these last days has, got, has lost sight of the field that Jesus has held you responsible for. It's not the pastor's job, beloved. It is our obligation. And the final result will reveal the quality of the seed that you have been planting, either flesh or spirit. And God will use that and say, I know the motive behind it. Look at Proverbs 6. I love this one. Proverbs 6, 9 through 11. He says, but you sluggard. That's offensive, I know. How long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, right? This is a procrastinator, a lazy person. He says, then poverty will pounce on you like a what? Like a bandit, a thief. And scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. He said, if you are not aware what is happening because of the procrastination in your life, I've been there. He says, things are going to come creeping in that you never thought were possible. Why? Because you're going to leave the gate open and someone is going to come like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. And this is a warning. God says, I'm, you will not mock me. He says, we will find out what is happening in your field. Beloved, as we're closing tonight, amen, I want to encourage you, amen, to let us sow seed, spiritual seed, to reveal the fruit of our labor, amen, because that's what our Lord wants. He says, I've, I've called you to be the greatest farmers everywhere. My people will have a field of pleasure and joy. Can you say amen? He says, I want to give you things. He says, I'm not telling you it's not going to be hard. I'm telling you here tonight, again, the Spirit of God would speak unto the church and say, amen, this is going to take a fight. This is going to take uh, resilience. It's going to take us staying up late at night sometimes to guard our prayers, to guard our hearts so that nothing can come in to steal from us. And it's going to require the Spirit of God to be in your life. 
You know what I've noticed and since I've been saved, amen, in my Christian life? Amen, that I was in forced labor when I wasn't saved. <laughs> I mean, literally, I had no guidance. I had no foundation, no structure, no spirituality, no guidance of anything that was positive in my life. I was in a forced labor camp uh, trying to fend for my life. Always trying to find the next fix to find joy in my life. So what would I do? The only thing I knew to do to keep me happy was to get high or to get drunk. And because of that, I was in a forced labor camp. But when I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and I thank God for that, I'll tell you what. The burden was relieved. And though I still had to labor for Christ, amen, we still got to labor, it flowed naturally. Because now I had a foundation. Now I had structure. Now I had a positive word that corrected me, but also encouraged me to continue the good fight of faith. And because of this, I'm, I'm, a lot of people will think, oh, well, the labor is completely gone. No, Jesus is walking alongside with me. I'm, he's carrying the load with me, and we're walking together into the celestial kingdom, encouraged because of his grace. Amen. Proverbs 12, 24. He said, the hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. I've seen God and asked my wife, I can't lie. Okay? I'm not, I can't lie today. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Amen. But I've seen seeds that have been planted years ago. On the day that I got saved, things that I wanted God to do in my life. God, I want to, I'm tired of being timid. I'm tired of being shy. I'm tired of just being frightened of people, God. I'm planting this seed by faith here today, believing that you can help me. I have seen miracles in my life. I have things today, not even material things, but my marriage and things that are sustained by the grace of God because of seeds that were planted on the day I got saved. Amen? Amen. On things that I have planted, and I said, God, I'm planting this seed today. I'm not expecting it to grow tomorrow. And if it does, then praise God. But if it takes 10 years, I will stand here and watch the gate. Uh, I will watch for intruders uh, and robbers and bandits uh, and spirits that want to take what is precious uh, in my life. Uh, promises and seeds that I will see one day. And God is speaking to his church here today. He's telling you, he says, you need to guard that fence. Uh, make sure that every time you go to bed, uh, it is not left open. It is secured by the power of the Holy Spirit and that you are living by faith to see these things begin to happen again. I've seen tons of things. I have things today. Amen. I, I just, I can't thank God enough. Amen. I said, how is this possible? This should not be for a person like me. Why do I have the things that I have today? I'm not just saying the house that he's blessed us with. Why God? He says, those were seeds that were planted in faith and they have sprouted to see the day come. And there are people here today, and then God wants to see those things begin to manifest. He says, they're coming now. I'm going to begin to allow this to happen. He says, but you need to wake up from your slumber and let Christ shine upon you. Let him touch your life. Let the Holy Spirit fuel you so much that you are willing to no longer sow seeds in the flesh, but rather in the spiritual realm. Rise up from your slumber, amen, he says, and let his, his, shine, his face shine upon you. It's time to repent, amen. To turn to the Lord that we may receive the inheritance that he has promised us. Look at Joel 1.11. He says, despair, all you farmers. He's calling for repentance. He says, wail, all you wine growers. Weep because the wheat and barley and all the crop of the field are ruined. The grapevines have dried up and the fig trees have withered. The pomegranate trees, the palm trees, and the apple trees, and all fruit trees have dried up. And the people's joy has been dried up with them. This was a call that he placed to the prophet Joel, saying, these things will continue to be destroyed until you repent. He says, your farming methods are out of touch. They're out of line from what I've called. If you've seen the movie Faith Like Potatoes, we saw this one a long time ago. It's a long movie, but one that's well worth it. And Angus Buck, uh, Buchan, he was an African farmer with Scottish descent. And he was facing difficult times uh, during that region. There was a great drought that had happened. I mean, you couldn't plant anything because the soil was literally like clay. It would just crack and nothing was possible. But because of his Scottish descent, he had a fight within him. Amen. He was a fighter. 
and started to plant a, a, a potatoes, but he noticed that as the crop failure began to happen, he was discouraged. There was racism down that time in, in, in South Africa, and they were fighting through a very difficult time, and they kept telling them, the locals that were there, you're wasting your time planting your Scottish potatoes. It's not going to happen in this region. During that time, he lost his son through a tragic accident. I mean, you could understand the discouragement that he felt during this time. And his wife, thank God for wives, amen, Jamie, <laughs> amen, because we can be stubborn, amen. His wife went up to him and said, Angus, he says, let's go to this small local church. He says, what you need is God's faith. What you need is to be spiritually awakened to understand your problems. And he was a stubborn man. Amen. But thank God for his wife. He started to attend this local church. He would criticize it. He would talk about the pastor, of how just things were. But all of a sudden, God got a hold of his heart. Amen. And touched his life. And he surrendered to the will of God. And in that moment, he felt a call in his life. He says, I'm giving everything to God. My field belongs to God. Can you say amen? The seeds that I plant are for God. All of this belongs to him because without him, this farm cannot succeed. Can you say amen? And in the worst time in Africa, during that time, it was a season of drought again. The locals came up to him and said, Angus, you're wasting your time. Don't plant those seeds here. But because of the new method that he had found, according to what he said there, he planted the seeds and reaped a harvest that was bountiful beyond what anyone could believe. There was potatoes all over the land. Prosperity and faith began to increase because he surrendered his field to God. How many of us tonight, you have a field? Every person, whether you see it or not, you have a personal field. And I'm not going to repeat myself too much here again, but you have a personal field with things that belong to you. They were promised by God. There's nothing wrong with prospering. I'm not afraid of prospering. I want God to help you prosper in your life. And there's prayers in there of hope, of calling, of destiny, and what the evangelist told you, what the pastor told you, what you read in the Word of God, that God wants to help your life. And like Angus Buck in here, who found faith in Jesus Christ, he said, this field is not my field anymore. It belongs to the Lord. And I'm going to do it the way he says, because what he touches is blessed and what is blessed will come into fruition, and we will be successful. And he gave his life to God, his field and everything, and found an amazing, bountiful fruit. It is so curious, amen, that in the last part of our text, in the main text, it says, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. Can you say amen? God bless you. Let's bow our heads in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to get the piano music playing, amen. Hallelujah, amen. As God ministers, amen. The Bible says that uh, uh, when King Saul was tormented and during the time it was David would come with a harp and begin to play, and the Bible says that it would minister to his soul. And that's why during the altar call, amen, we, I want the music to minister and to begin to set a tone tonight in Jesus' name. I'm going to speak to those online and here today. Let me ask you a question. What is the condition of your field? You are responsible for what happens in your field. And God, by His grace and mercy, is calling upon every single one of us, saying, I want my field back, and I want you to now tend it and plow it the way I intended it to be, so that we can find out what has survived. Maybe you're here today, you have destroyed everything in that field. You know who you are. You have gone against the will of God. You have done things your way because of the stubbornness in your heart. And you have seen prayers be destroyed. You have seen things collapse upon your life. And you have asked for God to begin to heal. But the only way it will be healed is if that field is surrendered to God. And you must kick out the rodents. Amen. You must kick out every evil spirit that comes against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't we begin to plant good seed today? Seeds that are spiritual. Seeds that will have impact and effect in your life. And this is what God has called for in Jesus' name. And if you're willing to confess that and, and say, God, I'm ready, I'm ready to give you your field back. I want you to raise your hand in Jesus' name. Say, God, it is me. I have, I have done it. I have left the fence open. And that's okay because I've done it too. And God, by his mercy, has restored and by his grace has given a new opportunity. He's the God of second chances. For that reason, Christ died upon that cross. 
to save a stubborn people like you and I. Thank you, Jesus, amen, that you saw at least a little bit of hope in us. He wants to help you here today on the live stream. That is you. Lift your hand, amen. Repent to Jesus, amen. Speak to him right now. Tell him you're sorry, amen. Tell him that you are willing to do it and serve him under his terms, and God, God of grace and mercy will help you. Anyone at all today, amen, tonight. In the name of Jesus, lift your hand by faith. I know we got a small crowd tonight, amen, but the Spirit of God is with us, and if he has spoken to you, this is a message from heaven. and saying, you need to understand what you've done is wrong. And we need to see what we can excavate. And the seeds that remain there are still for your life. In Jesus' name, anyone at all. God bless you, amen. I speak to the church. Amen. I, I felt God's revelation as he spoke to me. And it's very clear, amen, that we are now responsible for our field, amen. But we have strength tonight in Jesus' name, amen. I encourage every single one of you, amen, to lock the fence. Make sure that fence is locked every night during the, every hour of the day. And you go back there and you watch those seeds begin to grow. You go back there and you water it, you take care of that field as Jesus has commanded you. And you will begin to see your prayers be answered. You're going to start to see things in your life again that you never thought were possible. And I've seen it and I testify to the truth today. Do not be as those who are stubborn, but let the blessing of God flow in great power and glory in Jesus' name. Why don't we stand tonight uh, before we leave? I, I'm so appreciative of every single one of you. Amen. Let us come to the altar. Amen. The seats are coming, I know, but I, I also want to cushion this area so that we can uh, kneel. But let's just stand, amen, in Jesus' name. I'm grateful for every single one of you, my wife, my children. In the name of Jesus, let's speak to God. Father, we thank you. Lord of mercy, Lord of grace, amen. We lift our hands to the God who gives and to the God who takes away. Father, restore unto us the salvation that you have called unto us. Father, we rebuke Satan. We rebuke the devourer. God, we ask him and we command him in the name of Christ to leave our field. That we have the authority of closing that fence. And Father God, restore unto us, God, every seed that was planted, everything that was sown in faith, prayers that are represented here today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we would begin to see this. We thank you, my Lord. Amen. Give unto us hope and restoration. Father God, that we would reap a harvest, a bountiful harvest, if we continue to do good and not give up. In the name of Jesus, amen. Father God, I pray for my brother here right now. Restore unto him all that you've called in Jesus' name. Let hope arise, God. Let hope arise in Jesus' name. There is great hope in the name of Jesus. Do not be discouraged and do not dismay the message of the word that comes here tonight, amen. For I have called great things upon your life, for you have heard from all those who have testified. For I have placed words into the servant's mouth uh, and have spoken to you directly. For I have called today for the field to be given back to me, and I shall fulfill the promises and the prayers that are sown. Trust in me, and I shall make you a farmer of a great land, and the inheritance shall be yours. To see these promises, do not be discouraged, for there shall be times of difficulty and fogginess. But I am asking now that you remove the fog and be seen in the glory of Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I bless my sister right now. Thank you for her life, Father God. Let her promises be here today, Father. Let her know that her prayers have been heard in Jesus' name. God, as we pray for her, every seed that is planted will come to fruition. Let her see the sprouting effects of every seed, God. Let her family be touched, God. Sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus Christ. Relationships restored, healing upon the bodies of those who she's prayed for, God prosperity, God, and grace. God, I thank you for Brother Benny here today. Seeds that have been planted, let him know, God, your grace and love. Let him feel your touch, God. Praying for his grandchildren, God, his daughter, Father, God, all his children, in the name of Jesus, I bless this man. Amen. With the power of the living God, amen. For you are the one who has blessed him and have taken care of him, Father God. We lay a foundation of truth, God. I thank you for this man. God, bless his life. I thank you, God. Let every seed be, that was planted come into fruition, God. I pray for my wife in the name of Jesus. 
And God, that you would just continue mercifully upon her life, Father. I thank you, God, God, for her faith. I thank you for every struggle and hardship, God. We rejoice in all these things. But you have called us also, God, to tend our fields together, God, that we would guard our field, that we would never leave the fence open, God. And I pray for every promise to be fulfilled in our lives, God. Thank you for all that you've given us, for our children, God, and every promise that comes up ahead. God, we will serve you until the very last day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise. We thank you. Thank you, my God. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And I leave you with that. Watch the field. That's all we need to do. Amen. And just make sure that it's closed uh, before we leave. Amen. And take care of it. And I, I know. And I know. And I know. And I know. And I've seen it of God's great promises that have been fulfilled. I wouldn't be here today. I mean, a lot of miracles that have happened were the things and the prayers that I have hoped for for years. And when I see them sprout, God says, this is a grace that I give you to empower you to serve me and to continue. And a lot of people discard miracles, you know, oh, it's, I'm asking too much. No, nothing's too great for God. Amen. He wants to, he, in fact, miracles are a sign from him to say, I want your faith to increase. Here you go. He says, but you have to plant through seeds of the Spirit. And a lot I've heard people say, well, why does he bless me now so that I see the miracle and serve God? It says, your, your faith is not of God. Because you are asking in a way that is showing utter contempt to God. Serve him humbly and accept the things that he's placed within your life. Amen. Well, if he gives me a miracle, I'll do it. Nope. The Bible says, he that asks for one, in that very moment, he said, we'll only see the sign of the resurrected Christ. Amen. We don't want to hear that. In Jesus' name, amen. But God does want to show miracles to his people, and I know it, and all it requires is that. Amen. Give back the field to God. Can you say amen? amen? It belongs to him, and we are tenders of it. Amen. Let's close our eyes. We're bowing our heads. God, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Father God. Amen. I know that we could have been anywhere tonight. Even I, as tired as I am, amen. We just got back from El Paso, God, but a tired God, but I, I do believe in you, and God, that you will open great doors, amen, for this church and Father, as the shepherd here tonight, God, we have a, we're responsible for the field of the church. And Father, God, we have seeds that are planted. Our prosperity, we're praying for couples. We're praying for people that are filled by God's spirit, amen, who will conquer this city, who will unlock doors that I can't even unlock. But you have called them to begin to prosper this church. And hold me responsible, God, to always close and to tend this field and to shepherd, God, and to teach and to guide and Father, we thank you, God, for all that you've given us. I thank you for family. I thank you for friendships, God. It means so much to me, God. They are strengthening us as we strengthen them as well, Father. Give us your grace as we leave your blessing tonight. And may, may your face shine upon every person. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you on the live stream as well. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning uh, at 11 a.m. God bless you.